Hello and welcome to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you so much for joining us for another segment. We're going to be speaking with Shannon Resetich this morning, joining us here from Santa Fe Genzyme to talk about the company's humanitarian aid program that started 30 years ago. Welcome to the program, Shannon. How are you? Wonderful. Thank you, Neil, for this opportunity. Well, if you would give our listeners a bit of uh, your professional background and talk briefly about your role there at Sanofi Genzyme. Absolutely. I have had the pleasure and opportunity of uh, serving patients in the healthcare industry for over 20 years. Um, Many of those years were focused on supporting patients with rare diseases. I currently have the privilege of serving as the global franchise head for Sanofi Genzyme. And in this capacity, I'm responsible for overseeing the long-term and short-term strategy of the franchise and ensuring that we continue to advance our support and standards of care for patients around the world living with rare diseases. Is Sanofi Genzyme focused on these patients uh, exclusively? Are there other projects that uh, Sanofi is involved in? Sanofi Genzyme, the specialty care unit of Sanofi, has its roots in rare diseases. We were the first patient community that the company served uh, dating 30 years ago when the company was founded. And since then, Sanofi Genzyme has grown to meet the needs of additional patients and has added franchises in neurology, oncology, immunology, as well as rare blood disorders. Now, I understand that this year is the 30th anniversary of the humanitarian program. Tell me briefly about this program. Absolutely. This humanitarian program was the first and is the longest running program of its kind for people living with lysosomal storage disorders. It was introduced in 1991, shortly after the FDA approved our first treatment for Gaucher disease. And in the past 30 years, we have retained the core commitment of this program to provide free access to treatments for patients who otherwise would not have access to such treatments. Uh, And over the years, we have expanded it to include our approved products across other lysosomal storage disorders, such as Fabre, Pompe, MPS1, and MPS2. This program represents one of our greatest achievements, and it truly embodies the spirit and foundation of the Santa Fe Genzyme organization and our mission to support the development of sustainable healthcare systems and improve patients' lives. Now, you did say that you've maintained the core uh, values and and goals of the program. Tell me a little bit more about how it's evolved over the last 30 years, especially during COVID-19. Absolutely. The mission of the humanitarian program has remained the same over the past 30 years to deliver therapies to the best of our ability to patients with lysosomal storage disorders or LSDs uh, who have a demonstrated need and where access is limited. And while this mission has remained the same, uh, the program has continuously evolved over the years. For instance, we've introduced new products from our pipeline following their approval. We have expanded the number of geographies uh, that we support, as well as we've streamlined operational aspects um, of the program. And as you mentioned, uh, related to the pandemic, COVID-19 certainly has uh, shifted healthcare resources and exacerbated barriers to care for patients around the world. We recognize that this pandemic is going to have a long lasting effect. And that is why we continue to be here for rare disease patients uh, through this program into the long term. And we are committed to continue to do our part for these patients into the future. Now, when it comes to LSDs or these lysosomal storage uh, disorders, what exactly is this disease and why is the humanitarian program focused on them? Lysosomal storage disorders or LSDs are a group of rare genetic conditions that are caused by enzyme deficiencies. Our program for rare diseases focuses specifically on LSDs due to their rarity as well as the high level of unmet medical need that these patients have. Of note, all of our therapies for LSDs were the first and in some cases are still the only treatment available for patients uh, with these conditions. And as I mentioned, uh, our program supports LSD patients across a spectrum of LSDs, including Gaucher, Fabre, Pompe, MPS1, and MPS2. Now, what about some of the challenges for LSD patients living in in remote areas of the world? 
Absolutely. We manage a significant amount of the distribution to help to get the therapies uh, to these patients in remote areas. It's one of the benefits of being uh, part of a large global organization like Sanofi. However, we have a laundry list of NGO partners, non-government organization partners, that we rely on for their local expertise and relationships uh, to help to support patients and to navigate the challenges of reaching them in some of the more remote countries. Some of these partners include Project HOPE, the China Charity Federation, ANIRA, which stands for the American Near East Refugee Aid, uh, Direct Relief, uh, as well as an organization called Global Health Partners. Besides free treatment for many of these patients, what are some of the other uh, support that the humanitarian program offers? Yes, it's a very uh, comprehensive approach that we have to delivering services and support for rare disease patients. In addition to the humanitarian program, we provide support for patient diagnosis, for treatment monitoring, for patient advocacy, and physician education. Specifically for some of the partners and stakeholders for healthcare providers, many times the humanitarian program is the physician's first experience in treating LSD patients. And we provide training and education uh, for patient identification, understanding treatment expectations, as well as treatment monitoring. For governments, we collaborate with local officials to help to establish sustainable healthcare systems in their country for the needs of patients with lysosomal storage disorders. And lastly, for the patient community directly, we, we work hands-on with the patient organizations in the countries to help raise awareness for the unique challenges that LSDs bring, as well as to help address additional unmet needs of this population. How are patients made aware of your services um, other than your organization reaching out to different other organizations to identify them? We learn about patients needing access for treatment, and they learn about the opportunity uh, for this program in a variety of ways, um, including local medical teams, local patient advocacy organizations, uh, as well as patient inquiries, uh, as well as social media. No matter the avenue, uh, the physician in the country plays a central role to ensure that the patients are aware of the program and help to bridge uh, that patient to the program once uh, the patient has a confirmed diagnosis and the uh, inability to access the treatment. What's your vision for the program moving forward? In many ways, even though it's been 30 years, we are continuing to look ahead. This program is really at the center and the core of our DNA as a company at Sanofi Genzyme. This is an exciting year uh, that we're marking the 30th milestone that we've been able to support over 3,300 patients in 100 countries with this program. We're going to continue to reinforce and grow that commitment. Um, As a patient-centric organization, we're continuously looking for ways to advance standards of care for patients living with rare diseases around the world. And specific to this program, we've we've put a firm stake in the ground uh, that we are going to continue to support patients with up to 100,000 vials of medication uh, per year per patient, which will allow over 1,000 patients at no cost to continue to have access to these therapies around the world. Give us a website where our listeners can learn more about the uh, program and about Sanofi itself. Absolutely. We welcome your viewers to visit Sanofi.com to learn a lot more about this program, as well as having the ability to hear inspiring stories of hope and impact directly from the patients in this program. Right. Well, Shannon, I appreciate you joining us. It's been a pleasure speaking with you. Lots of great information, and I'm hoping that we'll uh, get an opportunity to speak again. Thank you very much, Neil. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, listen in, download at SoundCloud, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio. 